So we left off on a problem that we had trouble inverting the operator because, I'll circle the bad guy, it was basically that operator, the derivative operator d right there. That caused us to get this one over x times x minus two. So it was that x right there that messed, uh, messed us up. So what we're gonna do is look and see how to get rid of that. So in the book, this is comment, 25.35 when p of d has d as a 0 with multiplicity r that means p of d you could normally look like a n d n plus a one d plus a zero if it has a d as a zero multiplicity r you could factor it factor the d r out and you're going to be left with a bunch of lower powers right here so how will this look d r so actually we're not going to go to the a0 term. We're going to go a n minus r d to the r. r. So we'll have a n d n minus r So <clears throat> I don't really want to keep track of all these subscripts and superscripts so we'll just write it as dr uh, the original polynomial was p, so I'll just call this some other polynomial q. So you're just factoring out as many uh, uh, d as many d's as you can. In our case, for our problem, there's one that we can factor out right here. We had d squared minus two d, so we just factor out one of the derivatives. But Sorry. if it was go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you can just look at the smallest order term, and if it's not constant, that's your derivative that you can factor out. In the bottom, you have now n minus sign instead of n minus 1, right? Yes, and should be n minus r. I'm not really too worried about, don't worry so much about the details right there. Okay. I'm just showing you can factor out d to a power. The subscripts might not be exactly right, but we're not going to use them for anything. What we're going to do is factor the derivative out and then be left with the remainder. So that's all we're going to do. Uh, so what do you do next? How do you invert p of d? So that's what we're going to look at. So that's 1 over p of d. You can write it like this. And I'm going to use that uh, version that we just wrote down, which is d to the r times some new polynomial. And we saw that you can multiply these. What is the inverse operator of d to the r? So you could write d to the negative r, but what does that really mean? Integrate r times. Yep, integrate r times. So if basically if you can factor out d or d squared or d cubed, the inverse operator is integrate that many times. So that's all we're going to do to handle this. Then Q of D uh, has a constant term. So Q of zero is not zero. So before, when I plugged a zero into the P polynomial, I got zero. So that prevented me from writing the Taylor expansion. But if you factor all those out, your Q polynomial will not have, uh, Q of zero will not be zero. So the order does matter here. So let me write uh, the operator applied to a actual function. Unfortunately, I'm going to use capital X. Uh, capital Q is the function because that's 
think that's what the book uses. So if our original is PDY equals Q of X, we're going to invert the operator. Easy to write, hard to compute. And then if we can factor out that 1 over D to the R, we do that. And then we're left with Q of D. Uh, this order does matter. All right, so I'm just going to copy what's in my notes. So these orders sort of matter. If you integrate first and then apply Q inverse D, uh, what that looks like is Q inverse D would go second and D to the negative R would go first on big Q of X. So this if you integrate first, meaning apply d to the negative r first, uh, you'll get a yp with some multiples of a yc solution. to avoid these extra terms. Um, apply Q inverse first. Then D to the negative R second. <coughs> so your YP will be the way it was originally written, d to the negative r, then q inverse d of big Q of x. So apply it in the order we wrote it. So let's get back to the problem we we're working on. I'll just rewrite it here. We don't have space above anyways. So y double prime minus 2y prime equals 5. So we already wrote pd is d squared minus 2d, which factored as d times d minus 2. So I could rewrite this with pdy equals 5, and then y equals p inverse d of 5. And we already decided we only need the constant term of the inverse operator. because we're taking derivative of 5. So P inverse D is 1 over P of D. So that'll be 1 over D times 1 over D minus 2. So f of x is 1 over x minus 2. I want to find the 0 degree Taylor expansion of this function at 0, which is actually super, 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 super easy. Taylor polynomial is, let's see, f, this is at 0, f of 0 plus f prime of 0, x minus 0 over 1 factorial plus f double prime 0, 
x minus 0 squared over 2 factorial. All right, I don't need the higher degree terms, so I only need the constant term in the front. Oh, that's a B. Oh, okay. T, so F of 0 is 1 over 0 minus 2, which is negative 1 half. All right, that is what we're going to put in for 1 over D minus 2. Just obviously, well, there's no X term to replace with D, so it's actually super easy. So R, P inverse D is going to be 1 over d times negative uh, 1 half. So all we did was invert that 1 over d minus 2 right there. And I only need the constant term because I had a constant on the right side. If I had like 5x, I would get the first two terms in there. And if I had 5x squared, I would get the first three terms in there, just like we did on the previous problem. All right, so SP inverse D, we can now apply it. So I'm just rewriting that upper right equation. So we get negative 5 halves, and we're integrating this. So that's negative 5 over 2x. solution yp all right so any questions on getting this solution you could check it super easy what's the second derivative of yp zero, zero. so you got zero minus two times this which uh oh oh it's two times the derivative of this which is uh negative five halves times negative two is positive five mm -hmm. so it works as a solution. I mean, the differential equation was pretty easy overall. Okay, we're going to do one more example. <clears throat> this one's going to be a doozy. It'll put everything we just learned all together in one problem. Alright, step one, you need to write down what is P of D. So write down the operator first. Then find P inverse of D. And then rewrite it, Y equals P inverse D, 2X squared. When you get your Taylor polynomial, what degree will you need to go to? You need to go to degree two. So basically the same, if you... If it's a uh, polynomial on the right side, you're basically going to the same degree your polynomial has. So you're going to get three terms, a constant, degree one, degree two term. So I'll just write f prime zero plus, oops, it's not f prime zero, it's regular f of zero plus f prime zero x minus zero plus f double prime zero uh, x squared divided by 2 factorial. Alright, so I think that should be enough information on the board for you to get started. You need to fill in all those blanks. And in this one you should be able to factor out a d cubed as your, uh, you know, just derivative part. So I can't leave this on the board and the part from the notes earlier. So you got to use your own notes for what we just wrote down.
to make sure it works. Now you're waiting for guidance. Alright, what is P of D? D, oh, D to the fifth minus D to the third. D to the fifth minus D to the third. So that part should be pretty clear. So you can factor out a D to the third. You have D squared minus one. All right, so any questions on that? So now I have to find the inverse operator. Ignore the dq, well not, don't ignore it, but it turns into d to the negative three. And now what I have to do is find what is the inverse operator for uh, d squared minus one. So that's the Taylor polynomial we're gonna have to get. So I'll let uh, f of x equal one over x squared minus one. So I'm gonna need f prime and f double prime now. So go ahead, find f prime, f double prime, and plug it into the Taylor uh, series formula I have right here. And this Taylor series formula should be in your notes. You don't need a, you can just replace a by zero in your notes, because we're always gonna use zero. So you don't need the one that uses a. Is there any Taylor series in calculus for? Uh, not the Yeah, I don't think. I think you will do it eventually. We do. We don't have that much room. We do it in Cal 3. I can't remember. It was Cal 3 that we did that. We did it in Cal 2. Or no, we did it in Cal, Cal 3. Cal 3. Yeah. And we have different. Wait, but your coefficients are matrices in multivariable. I think you do it. Well, we did. You were supposed to do it at the end of Cal 2. But you did it at the beginning of Cal 3. That's right. Yeah, but then multivariable, though. You go to multivariable. Oh, yeah. We have done it. Or your coefficients are matrices of partial derivatives. I mean, we only have so many weeks to wait. Who knows if we'll get to it? Who knows? <coughs> All right, Taylor polynomial questions. <coughs> Mess up your derivatives. What's the derivative? Uh, we have the quotient rule, huh? You can. I would. I would write it uh, with uh, x squared minus one to the negative first power. Okay, and then just add. It. And go, subtract uh, So it would be x to the x. Chain rule. rule. You would switch. You can go from quotient rule to chain rule, basically, by rewriting. So write it at. There's. Well, there's plenty of wrong ways to get the derivative, but that's how I would do it. I think the next derivative, I'm going to go quotient rule, though. You could rewrite it, but you're still going to have a product rule. You're going to have to write it with a negative 2 power.
twos. Alright, is my F prime and F double prime correct? I did my power at the end. I think F double prime looks good. All right, we're gonna plug in zero for these. Well, F prime of zero is zero, that was easy. F double prime of zero is negative two times negative one squared minus zero over negative one to the fourth, which is negative two. And then regular f of zero is negative one. All right, so those, any questions on the three coefficients? So I'm just going to take those and drop them in the right place here. Well, zero x minus two x squared over two. So that's negative x squared minus one. So p, I wrote as q, q inverse, or just q of x, q of d is negative d squared minus one. And that's the reciprocal, or the inverse, operator to uh, d squared minus 1. <coughs> All right, questions on that Taylor <coughs> series? So, to just pretty much replace, you plug in the zeros, and that pretty much tells you the numbers yeah, so those guys were coefficients right there. Yeah, which is what you can do. And then you're, you could write zero factorial if you want that full pattern going, but it's zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, three factorial if you need it, four factorial, etc. And then <coughs> the x is factorial It's just increasing powers of x. You got x to the zero, x to the first, x squared, x cubed. It's normally x minus a to that power, but we're always going to be using zero for our Taylor series in, in inverting operators. Yeah. So you don't need the most general Taylor series. You need This is called the Maclaurin series, I think, when you center it at zero. So you really only need the Maclaurin series <coughs> formula. And then remember, if you get undefined, you probably didn't factor your d cubed out. So if you're getting undefined, that's most likely your problem. Okay, so we're ready to write this down. So we got our p inverse of d is d to the negative three. Times negative d squared minus one. So we're applying the negative d squared minus one first. So that gives us, let's see, first derivative will be four x, second derivative is four, but it's gonna be a negative that second derivative minus one times two x squared. So negative four minus two x squared. And we're gonna take three antiderivatives. You could try to take three at a time, but it's a little bit tricky if you do that. It's not so bad on polynomials. The power is pretty easy to guess. This is four x cubed. But now I have to divide by three times two times one, like that. So that's my all three antiderivatives right there. And then two x squared is really similar. 
my power is x to the fifth, and I have five times four times three underneath. Don't recommend doing this maybe on a midterm unless you're going to really check all your guesses. So I'd go one at a time normally. We can get a little reduction, but not too much. Negative two thirds x cubed minus third one, x to the fifth over thirty or one thirtieth x to the fifth. And this should be our y p our particular solution. All right, how in the world do we check? Plug them back in. So I'll need a fifth derivative and a third derivative. And then subtract them and hopefully that's 2x squared. So let's check. The next section is Laplace transforms, which I don't want to start the day before your midterm. So we'll spend a couple minutes checking and then call it a day. So find your third derivative and your fifth derivative and see if you can just jump right to your third derivative and right to the fifth derivative. So take three derivatives at one time. time. Or not, or take yeah. one derivative five times. <laughs> Either way, whatever you feel like doing. Just focus if you're going to do three at one time. And take five derivatives one at a time. <laughs> Either way, you're taking five derivatives, and you need the third and the fifth. You don't need the first two or the fourth. Unless you need them. That's not official notation. <laughs> Just feel like being stupid. There we go, 2x squared. All right, so any questions on that check or other stuff that we did? All right, so let's pretend that I am interested in what's on your midterm tomorrow, as you probably are. So I told you inverse operator is not on your midterm. So, algebraic properties of regular operators, or just regular operators, there was two pretty good sized pages of notes. I'm just doing a quick overview. So there's a lot of material we covered there. So there's pretty much guaranteed going to be one problem or more from that section, because it was so uh, time consuming. Uh, applications I put on your first midterm, right? So applications already covered. 
Well, let's count. We got six sections here plus one more. So it's seven sections. I'll probably put four, maybe five problems on your midterm. So basically one per section. And I'll skip two sections or so. No. Uh, problems are hard to make for the most part, at least problems that are not miserable to compute. So there's a pretty good chance I'll go in your book and grab problems out, or I'll go into another textbook and grab differential equation problems out of there. So they're kind of hard to make up. If you just write, to even just take constant coefficient, like third degree, <coughs> you could have a really hard, uh, you could have a uh, characteristic polynomial that has no rational zeros, for example. And your rational zero or fails immediately. Uh, so I recommend when you, when you, if you want to create problems, go to a book and take them out of the book and do like the odd ones with the answers if using a normal textbook. So just think of what question can I ask from each of these. Actually, 18, I think we didn't do any actual differential equations in here. That was just complex number properties. And then we did linear independence of functions. Oh, that's great. Well then, there's really only four sections of differential equations, plus one more over here. So that's one problem per section. Just think about what problems am I likely to choose out of what sections. A good way to go is look at what quiz did I give for that section. Another good way to go is uh, what's in the notes or what's on web work for homework. So those are the best places to study. And there is no review sheet, but you should be able to tell the Z5 sections you can choose problems to work on.